The next game is around the corner and you will have to face up against one of the fastest attackers in the league. What do you do? Well, most defenders, being quite heavy, strong and slow, would panic. But that is certainly not you, because you're about to watch an in-depth video on how to beat those Mbappe and Holland-like attackers. For this video, we are going to approach the solution of this defensive game problem from every angle. The technical, the tactical, the physical and the mental side. So sit down, take your notebook and let's get started with the technical side of defending fast players. You may not be in possession of the ball and therefore think of it as a skill, but the things we are about to talk will change your viewpoint and help you understand that defending is a skill just like any other technical skill that involves the ball. So with fast attackers in particular, a defender has to have the right body shape and mindset. Your first objective as a defender is to win time for yourself and your teammates. For this to happen, you need to contain the attacker and adjust your defensive stance accordingly. As you're backpedaling to delay the round of the attacker, try to keep a low center of mass and stay on your toes. This will help you adjust your stance and change direction if needed. Maintain an appropriate distance from the attacking player neither too far nor too close, based on where you are on the pitch. Your body shape should face towards the direction you want to lead the opponent to. This would generally be towards the attacker's weak foot, or most importantly, towards the sidelines and out of the box. Okay, you did a great job slowing down the attacker. Now what? Since you made it difficult for your opponents to use their speed, it is time to get physical now. Your goal is to be the salami inside a sandwich. Get yourself in between the player and the ball and try to take control of the play. Now in order to do that, I highly suggest defenders using a valuable tool that unfortunately not many defenders use, especially at the lower levels. And that is their arms. I cannot stress enough how impactful your arms can be when trying to control the outcome of a play. If you're a defender, don't worry about fouls. The advantage is on your side. Be cheeky and try to slow down your opponent by pushing your arm against the attacker's chest and win the battle by being physically dominant. Now obviously, there is no one size fits all here. Every game scenario and player requires a specific solution. So what about the tactical side of guarding fast attackers? There are lots of scenarios these plays can happen, but we will focus on three for this video. While the team is blocking high, while the team is defending on the flanks, and while the team is defending a possible cross inside the penalty box. Now before I go into the details of each scenario, let's go over the principles. First and foremost, slow down the attack. Time is precious for every defender. By winning time, you allow the recovery of more defenders and therefore the creation of a more compact, organized and supportive defensive unit, providing cover in case you lose the battle. By driving in too early, you are susceptible to getting beaten one-on-one, -on -one, and there is possibly a small amount of defenders lining up to cover your mistake. So keep your composure and be patient. You are not only winning time for recovery and balance, but also draining your opponent's energy. At the same time, you also want to keep the attacker out of the penalty box. That is where risk increases. Do your best to keep them out of the 18-yard line using your defensive stance and force a battle of strength, not speed. Let's now go over the first scenario that finds you in a high block somewhere around the halfway line. Since your opponent is fast, that is a scenario where a long ball on your back could easily get you and your teammates into danger. In that case, take some steps back, don't stay tight, and acquire defensive depth. Defensive depth is essential here. Maintain sight of the attacker, force a ground pass, and then prevent him from turning and facing the goal if possible to prevent the creation of an attack. Now let's say that a long ball has been played and you end up defending a fast attacker down the sideline. What should you do? Just refer back to the fundamental principles of slowing down the attack and adjusting your defensive approach accordingly. Either stay low and use the defensive stance principles we mentioned and wait for a slight mistake to lunge in and win the ball or run down the line trying the sandwich approach. Use your arms, slow down the attacker as much as you can using your physical strength and get in between the opponent and the ball as early as possible. If the attacker is so fast that you can't keep up with the run, adjust defensive roles in the back line and protect the box. Your goal is to limit the player's movement down the flanks and avoid getting them to cut inside and approach the box. Purposefully fouling your opponent using your arms is another option, but this is probably your last resort. Now if you're defending a player that is fast inside the box, be careful. Stay tight, since movement is limited, maintain arm reach distance, carefully track the player's movement with your eyes and avoid having him move on your blind side. If the play ends up inside the box, you just need to be fully switched on to react and adjust your positioning. Every millisecond and centimeter counts here, so be careful. And talking about milliseconds and centimeters, one thing that you gotta cultivate if you wanna win more of those is your self-awareness and cognitive speed. On one hand, you need to be self-aware enough to understand the strengths of your game and force every battle towards that in order to dominate. 
If you are slow, yet really strong, it makes no sense to chase players instead of forcing them into a physical battle using the methods we mentioned. On the other hand, cognitive speed is also key. With lightning fast players these days, elite level reaction speed can help you win valuable milliseconds. So if you're not investing time and energy into developing this area of your performance, now is the time to do so. And alongside your cognitive performance, I am also sure you're struggling with your speed as a defender. If that is the case for you, I would highly suggest you download our free ebook that will help you start training like a footballer should to not only improve your speed but also your strength and power. So if you're interested in that, just click the first link in the description. Apart from the physical side of the game though, the mental one is equally if not more important. Apart from sticking with a set of values and systems in regards to your mental prep before a game, you can also intimidate your opponents by showing physical dominance. This can happen in many ways, like for example winning a physical battle with your pure strength and power or dominating the field as a player overall. That mental dominance and confidence shows off by itself during performance. If the attacker sees you panicking, hesitating and second guessing all of your actions, he or she will dominate. Now, if you would like to further improve as a defender, I would highly, highly suggest you download our free ebook to become a more complete footballer and then also watch these two videos next to really take your defensive performance to the next level. Take care guys.